My name is Amit. I'm a CrossFit coach and a filmmaker. Join me as I follow my passion and eat my way through six unique cities while exploring the CrossFit scene and the culture in what can only be described as incredible Asia. Welcome to Out of the Box. Hong Kong, an oriental dream steeped in history, culture, and myth. I've been to Hong Kong a couple of times before, but it never really caught me. But this time I'm hoping it'll change because I'm gonna see it through the eyes of my old flatmate, Emily, and Hong Kong legend, Ant Haynes. Joining us on the journey is Shinga. Hong Kong is home to seven million people. And the best way to see the beauty of this former British colony is by visiting the peak. Skip the tram lines to escape the crowds and catch a cab to enjoy the stunning views from the top. Hong Kong has the third highest population density per square meter, but the city is still efficient. The walkways connecting various buildings make it a very walkable city, no matter what the weather. I'm catching up with Emily, Ant and Shingo at Din Tai Fung, a one-star Michelin restaurant known for its dim sum. You eat before class or I after? Oh, you eat before? Class. Before class. Before class, I wake up and eat. What, what number are we at? We are 28. So on 19. Let's move. I got the job from, you know, Ed Haynes. Like, when I was in Tokyo, I used to be... I mean, I don't know, just... When, since I came here, Hong Kong, you know, more big prospect of you know so that's why uh, yeah yeah that truffle so i'm actually from hong kong my mum's from hong kong my uh, my dad's in the uk i was born here grew up here i've lived here all my life the only time i've ever been anywhere else is when i went to university okay. for, uh, in the uk in newcastle for three years it was the first i mean we've been open now coming out to four years in december yeah yeah four years now the company has been around for nine years uh, in December. So we started off as like a small personal training business, just myself and my brother. And then Babs joined on and then Andy, who's now left us, um, joined on. And then we're now a company who's been in this space for four years. We now employ 13 people. Um, and yeah, it's running really well. I know for a fact like Coastal Fitness it's definitely seen as a performance and results based gym, uh, which is good, that's, a, that's what we want. Um, but what we also don't want is for people to only think we do that, you know. We still got guys who come in and just want to look good naked, they don't even want to ever do a power clean, they never need to stick a barbell over their head. You know, maybe it's just body composition work and that's, that's actually where we started, that's our, those are our original roots. Um, but yeah, I mean, what people sometimes see and perceive of the gym is not really how it actually is. I've been here for four years, um, moved out here from New Zealand for a job. I'm a lawyer, um, had a job opportunity which brought me out to Hong Kong. And I didn't do any crossword at all back in New Zealand. I was like a runner, played a lot of hockey. But when I came over to Hong Kong, I came over my own. Um, my boyfriend at the time, now husband, hadn't joined me. And I had no friends, I knew no one. And so I was like, well, I need some sort of community outside of like that corporate banking lawyer type group. I mean, it's talking about the community thing at Coastal. Like I did probably a year in the group classes. So like my heart's kind of a little bit still with that. There was actually like a, I'd done the team thing and there was actually like a local throw, not local, there was like an Asia throwdown. It was in Thailand. And I knew Ev was going. And I remember I was like, oh, Thailand, it's kind of fun. And I was like, hey, I was like, hey, 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 can I, can I come? And he was like, okay. So we ended up going out to Chiang Mai. It was a Thailand throwdown, so that was 2015. Um, so that was my first taste of competing as an individual. And I was like, oh, this is, this is quite cool. And so after that, that's when I started training just um, just with Ant doing my programming out of the classes. And then it just kind of snowballed, really. Were you, were you trying to be like gymnastic, Olympic gymnastic sort of thing? Is that uh, what no. you were trying to do? Or? Uh, well, of course, you know, when I was a gymnast, my dream was always Olympics. But uh, I knew, I. Well, maybe when I was 12 or 13 years old, I realized, you know, how far is in Olympic level. 
So only because you is here and the me is maybe here and then I was oh my gosh so far. And then I kinda like I you know lost motorbike and then yeah and then I stopped gymnastics around maybe 16 years old I think and then just didn't do anything. Just go to global gym. Japanese people we have a good you know we are really good sports, you know, but the fitness they don't do it. I don't know why. I think Japan is similar to Hong Kong where they don't like the um, like the physical hardship. Yeah. But like a barbell touching the body, for example, like hurting your hands holding the pull-up bar. It's something that's like very foreign to them. They don't like that sort of thing. When we first opened up again, we were foreigner dominated in the gym, male and, and foreigner. And now there's a much bigger split with male male female. I think it's like 60-40 in our gym now. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of locals like I got a lot of local personal training clients, um, and none of our PTs speak Cantonese. Well, one one can, but we encourage her not to, just because it kind of again divides up the community a bit. But yeah, the locals are they are slowly coming in, and again they're they're willing to spend spend the money on the health and fitness industry where normally they wouldn't. For Japanese people, that we have it. This is normal. It's a common it's a common wallet. We don't have a this type for it. I think, I think you've stolen this from a woman somewhere. <laughs> for Japanese people, we have this one. Lots of laughs and insights later, I head out to explore a little bit of the city before catching my flight. Built in 1847, Manmo Temple is an example of architectural tradition in the midst of being surrounded by high-rise buildings. With a unique history of foreign and colonial influence, Hong Kong's food scene is diverse and always exciting. Eating is very important. Hong Kong people can eat anytime and have lots of meals every day. Takeout and dining out is very common since people are often too busy to cook. In a city that's world famous for finance and its shipping industry, food is the backbone and obsession of the residents. I'm a convert. Scratch the surface and you start seeing the uniqueness of the city. Hong Kong, you found a way into my heart.